Hello and welcome everybody. Welcome back to the Travelling Brush Dippers. Here we are again, ready to uh, delight you with our, in well, we hope they're interesting stories, don't we, Denise? We, we certainly do. They <laughs> they're interesting to us. <laughs> we hope they are. Um, today, something a little unusual, something different. We're going to talk to you all about Hochanda. So you might be sitting there thinking, what's that? What's Hochanda? Hochanda, home of crafts, hobbies and art and it's a tv shopping channel where denise and i are often invited to go along and to demonstrate our products um whatever they might be the companies approach us and ask us to do it we are not actually there to sell the products we're there to show everybody how to use them and to give people product information and we've got some interesting stories to tell haven't we denise we have yes it's it's fascinating and it's the part of the day that most people don't get to see so yes yes so we're going to give you all the backstory and the inside story and the round the corner story aren't we really yeah and show you a few little images of some of the things that we've got up to over the years but i think you need to start us off sharon because from what i understand um, we work, we get approached to do this through the SAA, which is the Support for All Artists. They're a fantastic organisation, and I'm sure we'll be doing an episode on them at some point. In oh, the yes. Yeah. Um, but the materials companies get in touch with us through the SAA um, in order for us to be the demonstrators. And I understand it all started with you. Yeah, it was very exciting. I think it was one of those days in your life that has the kind of red flag next to it that you'll remember forever, really. It was um, Richard, who was at that time the MD of the SAA, and he got in touch to say that he'd got new contacts with um, this new program uh, called Hochanda, and they'd offered him a couple of slots for some arty products. And would I be interested to go along and have a go? And he'd spoken to Doe and went, and Doe went and said, yes, please, that they'd like their products to be showcased. And I trotted along and it was wonderful because Richard was so supportive. He was there waiting for me. He introduced me to everybody, all the people that I would be dealing with for the day and the owner of the channel and um, settled me down, really. The two of us set up the, our workstation on set together and he stayed backstage in the green room and uh, watched me perform. And I was horrendously nervous, horrendously nervous, right up until that moment where the production manager stands behind the camera in front of you and says, going live in five. And then you get the one. And it's that silence that gets me every time. <laughs> And your whole life just changes because there's no time to panic and there's no time to, to think. There really isn't time to think, is there? And no. the, the person who's with you, whoever is presenting, stands there and says, well, here we are, Sharon. How are you today? And you're off. Yeah. And that's it. You're off. No Completely rolling. Yes. No, so it, was, it was a wonderful thing. And as luck would have it, the following day, up at the SAA in Peterborough, uh, they're not, they're Newark, aren't they, in Newark, yeah. so I, I travelled from Peterborough to Newark, there was a big, big meeting because um, they had a group of people in to see all the postcards that people, the little okay. pictures yeah. that people had put together, and as I walked into the room and everybody shouted hooray, I don't think I will ever kind of match that day, really, they, it was oh, perfect. Oh, wow. Yeah, perfect. Oh, isn't that just incredible it, it really is an unusual experience um and I remember my my first call I got asked to do um and I was so scared because I, I know I can demonstrate what I was going to demonstrate but I had no idea how it would go in terms of live tv where the cameras would be could I do it in the time frames that they needed it to be in because you know although it's an, an hour's show you don't get an hour's demonstration time, you get maybe five minutes here and five minutes there. Um, and then it's the thought in your head, particularly if you've got a one day special of five hours of live TV that you've got to do. It's just terrifying. But it is also one of the most exhilarating things that yeah. you can do. Um, yeah. 
I really enjoy, I know it sounds really egotistical, but I really enjoy being in front of the yes. camera. Yeah, so do I. I like, I enjoy the adrenaline rush as much as anything else, actually. And um, and the fact that you, you feel that you're actually talking to people at home in their rooms, don't you? I, I Especially when they, they send in pictures. Yes. That feels like it's part of a conversation. Then. Yes, absolutely. So yeah. why don't we talk through the day from start to finish? So okay. that initial contact, we've heard from them. We know they want us to do it. What happens next, Denise? Well, the first thing that happens is you kind of go, yes, you booked in, and then nothing happens usually um, because you're waiting for them to confirm exactly which products are going to be on the show, what products are available, what ones they can get delivered in time so that they've got sufficient to put through um, on a show. Um, so you've got all of this, this sort of waiting time and the show's getting nearer and nearer and nearer, and you're going... Please let me know what's going on so that I can prepare because we we are both the same. We both like to have really thorough preparations because I, I don't like doing live TV where I don't know what I'm doing. Yes. So I want to have prepared everything. And then eventually you get the sheet, the call sheet of, of what's actually going to be on the show. And you kind of go, well, I've got that. I've got that. I've got that. I haven't got that, 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 that and that. And then it's this frantic toing and froing between us and the SAA to try and get the products out to us so that we can create samples with what's there. So how do you find that bit, Sharon? That, I find that stressful, that bit. Um, yes, because of course, you immediately you are uh, given the go ahead for the programme. The producers of the programme are online saying to you, can they please have some pictures some that they can use as stills during the course of the programme? They, they say that's for VT. All right. Mm -hmm. so, um, and to advertise the show. Yes, they want it so that they can promote what you're going to be doing beforehand and maybe even to use as stills within the programme mm -hmm. itself. And of course, if you don't get your products early enough, which doesn't give you a chance to test them to destruction, to read up on them, to know what they do and how mm -hmm. they work, and to, to play. actually play with them and to draw pictures or to paint pictures with them you're really and truly up the creek aren't you <laughs> and it's it's not a case of it being anybody's fault along the chain but the chain is long so by the time you've got your samples in your hand ready to prepare for the show it is then usually frantic because it's like right well they need the samples so I need to get them done I often work with Pebio with their mixed media stuff and that stuff takes a few days to dry. Right. So again, yeah. you know, you need to have it dry in order to pack it, to put it in the car to get to the show. So it can be, it can be a very full on couple of days when the samples come in. Yes. Um, yeah. But it is also the best fun when you get some new products arrive and you can play with them. Absolutely. And it, it's quite, it's like that, that just happened to me uh, last weekend. And mm -hmm. I, I was expecting product for a show on Monday and the products didn't arrive until Friday afternoon. And so Saturday and Sunday, the weekend was out the window. Was it ever, yeah. mate? It was out yeah. the window. And I bet you I, had a lovely weekend, yeah. though. Well, I did. And do you know something? They were so exciting. The, the things that I'd been sent... I yeah. hadn't used before and they were so exciting. I was sitting at the drawing board right here where I am now. And I swear to you, I had a tremor in my hand because I was, my brain was rushing through. I could do that. And then I could do this. And if I did that, I could do that. And I'm not going to have time. And I could do that. And, you know, the whole thing was just roller coastering, And it was just so exciting. My friend said to me a long time ago, when we were talking about TV and, and how it works. And she said to me, well, how do you know what you're going to do and what you're expected to do? And I said to her, I don't, <laughs> I don't. I have ideas, mm -hmm. but that's, that's it. But more about that in a minute, more about yes. that in a minute. Well, would you like to see a picture of my, my desk when the stuff comes in and I'm yes, starting please. to prepare? Yeah. So this is my desk when samples have arrived and you're starting to, to prepare and you've got all these little bottles and pots and jars. And for you, it's all those packets of pens that you've had recently. They must be so exciting. 
And it is good fun. It is good fun. So yeah, this is just preparing and starting to get your samples ready. The state of my desk. I love my desk. It's covered in splats and spots. Well, and... it proves that it's used and it's loved, doesn't it, really? And that's yeah, the point. Right. This is it already in pack to go, is it? Yep. This is when you start and you've got everything, you have to pile everything up ready to head off to the to the studio and it's surprising how much you know it looks like there's nothing when you're on the show but it's surprising you have to take a, all of the samples that you've made but you also have to take um all of the paints and pots they've got the demo pieces there but you the ones you're using you take with you so but when you me, say the demo pieces what you actually mean are the pieces that are up for show for the cameras don't you the well yes you You've got the paintings there, but they've also got a, 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 um, they've got all the products there as well. The nice clean products. I've got all the products yeah. that have got drips down the side where yeah. I've been using. So I need to the take all of those got, with yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. With the Pebio, because as well, it takes 24 to 48 hours to dry. I also have to take a shelving unit with me so that I can get them home in the car without the car being completely covered in Pebio. Ah, you beat me to it because I've got a note here that says stuff when wet question mark. Uh -huh. so <laughs> what I actually have is an old, it was a dehydrator where the motor went on it. So it's an old uh -huh. thing with lots of little shelves in it. And I just put my um, pictures into that um, and then put that into the boot of the car. So, yeah. so we've hey. got everything ready. Yep. You have sorted out what you're going to take demo wise. You've packed all the goodies and the things that you're going to use, haven't you? And you have to take everything, even the things that you're not going to use that they're that what they call upsells, upsells, mm -hmm. because of course people might want to see them in their boxes and you have to open them up so that people can see. So it all has to go, doesn't it? All of it. Everything has to go and I end up taking 10 times as much as I need because I'd rather have more than I need and not use it. And if it stay in the box underneath the desk, then yeah. get there and go, can you just show us this? And you go, no, nope, it's back in my studio. It doesn't work like that. You it have to take it all. It makes you look stupid, doesn't it? Which is yeah. Um, and there are times as well. And again, I'm not trying to you know, say this. It just happens in the way that things get, get presented to us or presented to, to her chanda. That you've got something that you're using as a kit and then you get there and it's in a different box with a different thing so you've oh, made a yeah. sample yeah and we've done, all done this yeah. you've made yeah. a sample of something yeah and, and it uses to, products yeah. from two different kits and you're like okay <laughs> <laughs> rethink <laughs> yes Why? Yes. yes, how can I work that one in? No, it's very true. So how far is it from you to get to the studios? The studios are in Peterborough, aren't they? Yeah, so just in the really. other side of Peterborough, yeah. I would say for me, it's probably about two, two and a half hours, depending on the traffic. Okay. Yeah. So what about yourself? Um, it'll take me, I've done it in three and a half. Um, mm -hmm. I found that it's much easier at night time. So I have actually in the past left a class at quarter past 10 at night and, and gotten on the road and driven up there wow. ready for, you know, the next day. Bless her. Caroline at the bed and breakfast get, gets to know now that she can expect me late. Um, <laughs> but I have also taken up to five and a half hours to get there in bad weather. So this is a very important thing that we're going to describe next. You need to leave time because I've been sat there and the lady next to me hasn't arrived in time because she's taken five and a half hours and you miss your show and they have to put a video on and it's not funny. So they're not pleased and you feel no, stupid. No. Yes, and you've lost your chance, haven't you, really? Mm. So you jump in the car and you do your two and a half hours drive. Do yeah. you tend to go up the night before? How does it usually work for you? For me, nearly always I stay overnight. Um, it would only be if I had sort of a one o'clock in the afternoon show as my first show, then I would go, you know, or sometimes the one day special start about four or five o'clock in the afternoon, don't they? Yeah. yeah. So those I would drive up on the day. But as we both know, the TV studio requires you to be there. Um, when we were allowed to actually go there, they require you to be there two hours before your show. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, you know, if you've got a show, and um, we'll come on to the timings in a minute, um, that's first thing in the morning, 
then it's an early start. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'll tell you about that in a minute. Yes, I'm sure you will too. It's yes. yes. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I I prefer to go the night the night before if I can, unless the show's start in the afternoon. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's just too much to try and do that, set up, travel, um, and get yourself in a position where you're calm enough to do live TV. That's very important, actually, because there's nothing worse, is there, than getting there when all your neck's red and your face is all flushed because you're stressed out with yes. running about. I, I've had that happen to me at demonstrations, and I always leave myself a little bit more time to get to a demonstration, but there have been times when the traffic has been chaos and you've got there and, and you know the demonstration was supposed to start at 7 30 and you've arrived at 7 26 and you kind of slide sideways into the room with all your stuff and go Ta -da! do a three-point turn yes <laughs> and <great> turn. <laughs> yeah and that's yeah. not fun and obviously that's not practical with the tv show anyway because you have to yeah. be there in advance but um yeah it's the last thing you want is that stress yeah Yes, that's very true. And this is a very good time, actually, to give a shout out to Lower Farm Bed and Breakfast. We, yes. we tend to stay with uh, Caroline there, don't we? And it's the most wonderful conversion, isn't it? A farm conversion. And she Fabulous makes... Fabulous accommodation, yeah, wonderful so, breakfast and a wonderful welcome. Yeah. Very, very lucky to have that on the doorstep. I used to stay at Premier Inn until that point. And the problem okay. there, of course, was the fact that I also had a 10 mile journey in the morning to get to the studios and depending on traffic and weather and what have you. And of course, timings, because down to timings, if your show is early, so maybe you start at seven in the morning, you have to be in the studio potentially for five, don't you? Absolutely. And... There is no makeup lady or oh man. There is nobody there to do your hair. There's nobody there to do your makeup. So it's a case of getting up at stupid o'clock, <laughs> sitting down in the bed and breakfast. I tend to do it all before I leave because I, again, I find that flusters me less if I'm having a cup of tea, get myself ready. Yes. Um, and then head to the studio. How do you do it? I do the same as you, actually, because, uh, as you say, it gives you a chance to wake up and to <laughs> because you even with a bed and breakfast, you've still got a bit of a drive, haven't you? So you need to be alert enough to be on the road. Yes. And of course, you do want to make sure I need with this much polyfiller, I need to <laughs> I need to make sure that I'm putting it in the right places. I don't want mm -hmm. to look, you know, as though I've done it in the dark. By candlelight, really. Um, <laughs> with one eye shut, yeah. Yes, with one eye shut. So it's quite important to be out there. Now, that, let's be fair, there are changing rooms and dressing rooms at, yeah. at the Chanda, so they're actually very, very well appointed, let's be fair. They but are. I still prefer common. to do that in my own space. Yes, because once you're there, you are already ramped up psychologically and adrenaline-wise to to be there and to perform and potentially you could land up with your production manager walking through the door of the green room any to any time mm. to talk to you for a meeting so it's better to do it first isn't it yeah i mean you can touch up the cracks before you go on air <laughs> put on a bit of new lippy um That's but polished. you know yes but the, the yes. rest of it is 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 basically there and i have to say caroline and i from the from the bed and breakfast from lower farm uh, we have this wonderful ar arrangement because the last couple of shows that I've done, I've had a 7 a.m. show and an 11 a.m. show. So what I've said to her is, right, I'm leaving at quarter to five. And she's kind of gulped. <laughs> and she's like, I'll, I'll leave you breakfast out then, shall I? And I'm like, no, 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 no. What I'm planning on doing, and we've come to this arrangement, and I love it. I'm going to the show. I then come back after the nine, uh, the seven o'clock show. So I finish at eight. I drive back to the bed and breakfast. I have a nice, chilled, relaxed breakfast. Good she idea. hasn't had to get up at stupid o'clock. Yeah. Then I go back to the studio and, and I'm ready for the next show. So um, that works for me. I thought of it. <laughs> I'm going to be claiming that one the next time I go. Yes. Please do. Well, it means she doesn't have to get up early. And it That's means that I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not ready to eat at five o'clock in the morning. Yes, that's very true. That's true. Mm -hmm. 
So, so when yeah. you get to um, the studio, what is your first task? Why, why do we have to be there, Denise, that early? Tell everybody. <laughs> Lots well, we to have do. to set up the studio, don't we? But the first task is to get your trolley. Yeah. So you go in to the, to the front reception and you get your, your badge and you sign in with the security. And then you get this trolley and you wheel it back across the car park to your car and you load everything up onto the trolley. That trolleys. wakes you up, doesn't it? <laughs> well, it? They've got all of these bumps there and it is. It's like a pneumatic drill driving this thing across. And as you drive a class across... The trolley shakes and things start to fall off the side <laughs> of the trolley. So yeah, that's um, that's the start of it, and you can then go <laughs> through into the studio and start setting up. But I would say for my Hachanda shows, I think it probably takes me the best part of an hour to lay everything mm -hmm. out on the desk. Mm. Um, all the jars need stirring. Um, you know, it, it's and setting everything up at the back. Um, would you like to see some pictures of, of setting up? Yes, please, love to. Okay. Okay, so this is me arriving with my trolley and, and my, my bag of goodies um, for setting up the show. So they've got these different areas within, within the studio. They call them the lounge and, and the... Um, the loft, isn't there? And the, yeah. Uh, yeah, kitchen. So there's, there's different areas that you're assigned your area. Um, so you start off, you get all your stuff there, and it's just setting up. So you can see down the far end of the bench there, that's where the products are all set out, ready for the cameras. Um, yeah. Standing around. And you work the, the this closer end to... Yes, so you've yeah. got an area where you're going to do your demonstrating, and okay. then the, the team move along uh, the, the desk. So this is some of my samples that I've, you know, put out. And do you put your samples up yourself? Usually, yes. Or you make me feel guilty because I just dumped them on somebody. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, for me, it's more a case of I, I take the set apart. I probably shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> but I kind of go, oh, there's something on there. I want that shelf form. That comes down. Yeah. And then I start yes. putting my things out there. Yeah. So, yeah, it's putting my, my samples out. And sometimes it's a case of having some samples that you want to set, dress the set. And then mm -hmm. you've got some samples that are along behind the product so that when they're describing the products, they, you know, the, the presenters will hold those, those samples up. I got it. Yeah. So you need a bit of both. Yeah. Um, and here we have a, the other end of the desk set up with all the products and got my presenter there and the um, couple of the production crew. And they're just running through everything to make sure that they understand what's going to happen and what's coming up. And um, do you know, this is a point in case, a case in point, isn't it? Because when they do that, you go through all of the items with your production team. So that's the producer there with the paper in her hands mm -hmm. and the presenter, the lady here behind the desk. They have to absorb what you've got in that five minutes. And it stuns me because they go through it all, you tell them the special, um, the, you know, why this thing is special, what it does, how it works. Oh, and don't forget, you can do this with it. And they take it all on board, don't they? I'm just so impressed. Incredibly impressed. And they take it all on board. And then an hour later, they take it all on board for the next show and yours is all gone and they've taken it yeah. all in for the next next team and the next um, product set of products. Must so, have yes. amazing memories. And you can also see along the back here my samples that are, are set out to oh, show yeah. us, um, what the products do. So, And presumably over on the far right hand side, that is another set over there, isn't there? There are about six, yes. aren't there? There's and six bear in the mind, everybody, that when we are setting up and having this meeting, somebody else, the other side of the studio, is filming live. So you have to be fairly quiet. They're filming live whilst you're doing this. Have you ever had anything fall over and everybody turns yeah. around and looks at yeah. you? <laughs> I actually had a plunk fall on my head once out of the ceiling and then <laughs> I was on <laughs> that was quite novel. Oh, I think the, the weirdest one was one time they were using the overhead camera on the live um, set that was that was being used, but they needed the same camera for my set. So whilst I was being introduced, I was standing under a ladder chatting 
to the presenter, yeah. not pretending not to notice that somebody was climbing above my well, head yeah. to that's fix right. it into the ceiling. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yes, it's all fascinating. Right, let's come out of there. In actual fact, that's when I landed up with the plug on my head because we got into the demonstration and realised that they hadn't moved the overhead camera from the gantry over the road, so to speak. So they had to go and take it down quietly. This great big piece of equipment, you know, heavy camera. Huge and then, metal ladders. Yes, next to me, like you, whilst I'm trying to demonstrate. And then, of course, the plug, he went to plug it in, dropped the plug and it, it landed wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and but you were all right, I hope. Oh yeah, perfectly. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> There's so much adrenaline going through. I think a, a bull could run over you, and you wouldn't notice. <laughs> you? you do because that adrenaline rush when you when you you know, and I your description at the beginning is five. You know when they start doing that with with just the fingers, um, it's amazing. Now something I've never. Um, been asked to do because I know they won't let you go on set without having had a, a course on this. Have you ever had the feedback um, no. earpiece? No, no, because that I must haven't be either. All together, must it? When you're trying to stand there and talk, and somebody's talking yeah. in your ear, and you're talking to the person next to you. Uh, yeah. uh, no, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'd quite like to do it. I'd quite like to go on the course. Yes, I, yeah, I must admit, I know I could do it. So do you? Yeah. Yeah. yeah and if we can we can have a perfectly normal conversation with a person next to us while somebody's climbing a ladder over your head you know you can do you it. know you can do it <laughs> so yeah because that's the thing when I first started did you have to do a screen test for this no Never no imagined. I didn't no. it was just like go and yeah, they kind of um, <laughs> they sort of said to you here you go off you pop uh, here's a couple of rules and that that was all the sort of preamble that that I got and I think the only thing they said to me was um because one of the things that happens is you're standing there and you've got the cameras there's usually three cameras in front of you and you can see by the red light which one is is being used um but underneath the cameras there's a tv screen showing there were the fact there's two tv screens one showing what is going out live at the moment and one showing what is going to be the next shot so they they show you what camera they're going to next and one of the things you have to be very careful to do is to not watch the TV because it'd be yes. very easy to be doing this the whole time. Yeah. The, yeah. Customers, yeah. 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 So you have to teach yourself to look straight at yeah. the camera. And I found that yeah. a little bit odd. Yes, yes. So and, and and keeping up when when the light changes so that you know which camera you're going to go to. Yes. Yes. Yeah. There's, there's lots of little things, isn't there, that mm. um, are quite disconcerting, really. But yeah get used to well, it you do get used to them quite quickly but it's that first day it was like I've got to remember that I've got to do that I've got to look at this I can't look so, at that I've got to talk yeah. to her yeah yeah no that that was all, all you kind of get to the stage though don't you when you think oh stuff it I'm just going to do it anyway just sit down and do my demo <laughs> well, one of the other things we were saying about how professional the presenters are yes I don't think there's a presenter I've worked with that I thought I don't want to work with you again. I think they are never. all amazing. I've got my favourites, of course. I've got my favourites. Yeah, um, never. yeah. But I think they are all so good at what they do. So do I. And I think so the thing I. that amazed me when I first started was um, just how much enthusiasm they have for your product. Yes. And they do actually because they know the products themselves and they do use them. Because, you know, they're all crafters and, and stitchers and stuff. I can't say that. Stitchers and sewers. Um, and, and they know what these things do themselves. And every now and again, it takes you by surprise when they turn around and ask an incredibly intelligent question mm. that, that makes you, that draws me up as an artist and makes me think, oh, you really do know about this, you know, and it's mm. lovely because yeah. suddenly realize you you're you're dealing with somebody who is genuinely interested in the product yeah yeah and that to me makes so much difference when you've yeah. got one of the presenters who's not going through the motions who's who's genuinely interested in what you're doing and I would like to say although I I 
I don't go that often. You know, it's, it's every couple of months I get a call. So it might be, I don't know, four to six times a year that I, that I go up there. So it's not on a weekly basis. And I know there are demonstrators that are there every week, week in, week out with their, their oh, products. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, but when you get there, the warmth with which we are yeah. greeted by the presenters. Oh, I haven't seen you for ages. How are you? How's your, you know, how's your husband? How's this? And they remember um, yes. about your life. Yeah. Um, you know, have you settled in now? You've moved house. But they remember things about what, what you're doing. And um, to me, that is impressive, but also heartwarming that yes. this is there. Mm. No, you're right. You're, you're dead right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they're all good. The production staff are brilliant as well, aren't they? They're very, very knowledgeable. Yes. Don't you think? I mean, you you know, even when when you go into the sound room and when you look through the window of the room where the producers are sitting with with all these screens, with all the different shots and they're making sense out of it as it's happening, as it's working. And the speed I, which they it's work. mind blowing, actually, isn't it? Mm. And yeah. I've been, been there on the odd occasion where um, somebody's doing something electrical and there are great big hunks like this of cables all tied together and they know what everyone does what's <laughs> how yeah but you know what every paintbrush does or what every pen does it's, it's yes. knowing your, your thing the other thing that you know i would say about the production team being genuinely interested in us and what we do um i don't know if you remember connie who used to be one of the um producers I think she was oh yes I do yes 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 well she left and went to go and live in Singapore and at the beginning of last year before we had all of these these lockdowns I went out there my husband and I were out there on a trip and we met up with her for coffee um, oh, okay. and we had dinner with her that isn't something I would necessarily have expected her to do but <laughs> she kind of went no we'll go out to dinner um yeah. so I thought that was that was lovely that she remembered us enough and was interested enough and hadn't just moved on from the job. Yeah. It wasn't just part of the job. So um, big up to all of the team, actually, all of yeah, the production crew, so. not just, yeah. A lot of respect for all of them, actually. And the hours they work. Oh, but what is it, 10 yeah. hours, 12 hour shifts? They're horrendous. Oh, yeah, whatever and it is. And they start on. at really silly okay. o'clock. Yeah. It's Full on because of course they're moving from one show sometimes straight into the next hour so they've got mm -hmm. to switch gears like that you know from oh I'm I'm painting an art oh I'm now I'm sewing and then I might be stamping and and you know the, sh the short breaks in between so deep respect from that point of view and a lot of them travel for miles don't they I know Leonie goes up um because she lives down my neck of the woods yeah she's bright so, isn't she I think yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's 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 um, it's all full on. But then that's what you'd expect from TV. But I think the most bizarre experience I ever had. Do you remember they were, uh, were um, uh, broadcasting to the Dutch at one? Oh, stage, yes. Yes. And they had a Dutch presenter, didn't they? Yes. And I can remember that was a very early morning start. So I think that was another seven o'clock. And yes. um, everything I said, she God bless her, she translated everything wow. so i'm That's standing amazing. there and, and this lady's talking away um and and talking to the dutch audience and i didn't have a clue what was going on and it was just a case of oh you can demonstrate now sharon you know switched from dutch to english you can demonstrate now oh, 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 fine. <laughs> yes would you like to show us the photograph of you sitting in the chair oh what the throne yes look at you in that wonderful chair they've got two of these in reception haven't they they have, they've got two, haven't they? The, the blue one and the pink. And yes. uh, they travel with them, don't they? Where, wherever they are, if they're doing live shows or they're out mm -hmm. and about, um, the thrones go with them. So I just could not resist. I think everybody's had a photograph taken in the throne. A selfie. But, yes. Yeah, good fun. Good fun. Yes. You said about they take them out when they're out and about. Um, didn't you get to do one of their live shows with them once? Tell us about yeah, that. I was, yeah, I was lucky enough. Um, they were at the Kent Showground. And uh, so I travelled down there for the weekends and they did a year of, of going around the different um, big venues like that and, and 
taking it out on the road live. And the presenter, everybody went with the camera crew. And um, I'll show you this. Picture. So in, in this particular photograph, you can see the setup for a live um, production, a live show. And all of this was being broadcast live as we worked it and as we demonstrated. But the thing that got me was the actual setting up of the gantry. I watched them do it on the Friday afternoon. And the chaps were just clambering all over it. I mean, up in the air, crawling along the... the I, I, I was just amazed, you know, in this day and age where everybody is so aware of health and safety, <laughs> that was out the window. I was just so impressed with their agility once again and the speed that they put these lights up and worked it. Um, and it, it, was, it went very, very well. We had three cameras. Mm. and um, what you would normally have in the studio anyway yes indeed and uh but each camera was manned on this occasion okay. and that's the back my back over there on the right hand side i next see to the speaker, you um just talking to the presenter about what we were going to do but that was great because of course we had lots of um people come through for the weekend and i was on the saa stand along with emily oh, okay lovely emily but, um, I was running workshops there as well. So juggling two balls, really, you know, mm. running down to do the Hachanda bit and then running back to do the next demo on the stand. So, yeah, it's good. Brush it Yeah. You, you were saying there about you were talking to the producer at the side. Um, we have a production meeting before every show. And that's really where the presenters absorb so much information, don't they, about, you know, yeah. Yeah, be happening. Um, and we get quizzed as to what we're going to do. What demos are you going to do this time? And so they try and <laughs> I do remember one show that I did. And I think I had about four minutes at the end of the show. Um, I didn't know I was no going to be doing another then. demo. No, no pressure, but I didn't know I was going to do another demo. I thought four minutes, they're just going to talk on about the products like they do, you know, and upselling stuff. And the presenter turned to me and said, you've got four minutes, what are you going to do? Ah! <laughs> die down and die, probably. So I did a whole painting. <laughs> In four well, minutes. And it hilarious. worked, it worked fine. But you um, know when you, they put you on the spot like that? Um, uh, I have to well, say... Have, have you ever had right. anybody phone in? I was, there was one particular session, I had it all laid out what I was going to do, all, all next to me on the table, you know, this demo, and then when I've done that, and they, if they give mm -hmm. me, what you tend to do is you think about one big demo, so that's your one piece that you can maybe come and go to during the course mm -hmm. of the show. And then you have a couple of little bits and pieces where you can showcase um, particular products that you have, don't you? And on this particular occasion, I was right in the middle of my demo and somebody came up with, oh, Sharon, we've just had a phone call to the studio and Doris wants to know if you can paint an octopus. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Doris. I'm in the middle of the landscape. <laughs> and all of a sudden I'm sitting there live on TV thinking, oh, how much? How so do I paint an octopus? That? I got my own back because um, I'm sitting there thinking, how am I going to do this octopus fast and efficiently and effectively? And so I'm thinking, how many legs has an octopus got? Right, okay, got that right. And then thought to myself, tentacles, suckers. So I said, well, to the to production team out there beyond the cameras, well, it would be wonderful because I know what we could do with the suckers. If somebody could find me a straw from that well-known food outlet, then I could just pay, put it in the paint and do the suckers. And you could see the other people on the other side of the cameras going, oh, oh. Well, they do have a shelf out the back of props. And there are times when somebody goes rummaging through this shelf of props. So that's where I bet you somebody went over and had a look. But they've got all sorts of things there, like the stands to hold your products onto, the little ledges. And, you know, there's all sorts of things Eagles over there. Things, yeah. Water pots and cutting mats and, you know, all sorts of things. So, um, yeah, I'm sure somebody went... Yeah. 
Yeah. No, they are they are amazing, aren't yeah. they? They are yeah. absolutely. I've, fantastic. I've done that twice. We we had another phone call one day with somebody asking if we could use the pencils on parchment, and I turned around and said, "Well, I have no idea. I've never tried it. So if we can find me a piece of parchment, and once again, three people went off in different directions. <laughs> <laughs> a million miles an hour. Because normally in the studio itself, you've got yourself there is the presenter and there is the floor manager who is moving the cameras up and down the desk as per the instructions of the production office. Um, so obviously it's silent, but these people start doing stuff. So you know somebody's talking to them, but because we haven't done the, the, the talk back, you know, we don't That's, know what that something is. Yeah. And sometimes the presenters just start laughing and you know somebody said something, <laughs> which is quite funny. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, we have some yeah. fun, don't we? We, we do. Have... do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you remember when they swapped studios? Because they changed from one big studio, built a new one, and everything was moved literally overnight, wasn't it? Yeah. All the staff had, and the presenters had to stay and be there and move it all so that there was no break at all in transmission, which no. was such an amazing thing to do. And when I went in and they were still setting all of this up. I can remember on that particular day, we were doing that, somebody was doing scaffolding and somebody dropped a scaffolding pole. Oh. And the fact the scaffolding pole fell down on the concrete floor because it hadn't been covered at that stage and it went ding, 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 as it hit, you know, as it hit, did this. Somebody opposite me dropped what they were setting up and as they dropped it, they swore. And so everybody <laughs> in the studio just, just, ground to a halt and it was hilarious yeah I do remember the pressure because I think on one of the sets I mean obviously the the whole studio is six different sets and I think I was in the studio so it must have been a very similar time to you you must have been the day before day after me or something we have done I was, that and you and yeah I. um I was the first person to use this set and they had these brand new tables and brand new everything that they'd set up and I was thinking, crikey, I'm doing this Pebio. It's an oil-based product. If if one of my pots of paint gets tipped over, it stays. On this table. Yeah. And I was thinking, I've got to be so super careful because it can get sticky. And so if you try and put something down with sticky fingers, and lift your finger yeah. up, the pot goes over. And, you know, there's all of this stuff going on, hopefully, <laughs> out of shot of the camera. It's all good fun. It is all good oh, fun. Dear. It is. Shall I show you something? I've got something here I can show you. And yep. I'm, I'm wondering whether you remember this. Now, you know, I do quite a lot of Pebio shows when I'm, I'm working. Um, but I have this picture here. Mm -hmm. So that's using the Pebio products. Do you remember when we did this? Because you were with me yes, when I painted this that. Yes, this was the day we went up to London, wasn't it? It was, wasn't it? And that was the first yeah. day I used, got to use the Pebio yeah that was a long time ago gosh that was years ago now wasn't it we were um, and this is how i got involved with pebio because we and a lot of other uh, pas from the saa professional associates of the saa were invited up to pebio's offices in london to have a play day um do you remember how it went such fun it was mm. such fun yes yeah, yes. and they, they gave us all our little sets and just said, you can do this with this and that with that, and now have a go. And then just for good measure, gave us a great big canvas on the floor, didn't they? And said, now whatever you've got left in your pot adds to our picture. And it was terrific, wasn't it? It was amazing. Yeah. Lovely way. Yeah. Super way to get involved in a product. Yeah. Well, I think it's one of those things. If you, if you teach the teachers how to use your product, product they will, particularly if you can get them enthused about it, they will enthuse about it to other people. So, you know, definitely well worth, well worth doing. Yes, very much so. Yeah. Yes. And at some point in the future, we will be doing some product demos and product testing that we're going yeah. to oh, yes. talk about in a future episode. So oh, yes. keep your eyes peeled for those. Absolutely. Mm. So that's, that's our days at Hachanda, isn't it? When are you next up there? I haven't got a date at the minute. I'm waiting to, to hear some dates. You've got some coming up, haven't you? Yeah, 31st of March. So that's that's okay. my next show. Yes. Is yes. that with Kurataki again? No, nope, this is going to be Derwent this time. Ah. 
So what are you uh, using, the pencils or the paint pens, or do you know yet? Pencils, really, in, in the main this time. So, uh, yes, going to have some nice things to show everybody. Yeah. Oh, that'll be wonderful. Yeah. Well, the only other thing I was going to say was that at the end of the day, I don't know how long it takes you to clear your pens away, but when I'm doing Pebio, I would say it takes me best part of an hour to put everything away again at the oh, end of the of show. Course. Yeah. yeah. Um, and clear up all my sticky mess. <laughs> pack everything, put everything in my little shelves, um, ready to go in the car, and then I start heading home. But I quite like that hour of just quietly and methodically yeah. putting everything back in its place. Yeah. Because you do come off set on a complete high. You know, yeah. the camera cuts and it, it's like, um, we have to wait for the mics to go out, don't you? They, what, what's yes. the phrase they use? Off air? Mics out. And yeah, well, they say mics out, but they say something before that whilst you're waiting for the mics to go out. But um, mm. and then you have to be silent still because your mics are still going live out on mm. air. So you have to kind of hold fire a few minutes. Yeah. Yeah. And then when they say mics out, you can kind of go, <sighs> yeah, yeah. And you've got this such adrenaline rush. If I think, I think if I got in my car and drove within five minutes of that, I'd probably drive straight into a bollard or something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't say that. Such a, <laughs> Yeah. Jiggling rush, yeah. Yeah, you do need to. It's interesting, isn't it? Because people do offer to help. Again, very, very helpful. You know, what do you need me to do? Can I help? And really, the only thing I'd say yes to is water. Get rid of my water and maybe help throw the rubbish out. But the rest of it, I like to slowly, like you, put it away myself. It's part of the completion process, isn't it? You it know, is. then it's the job that's done. So. And it also, for me, means I can find stuff. When I get home, yeah. then stuff can go in the cupboard in a way that works. If you yes. just kind of scoop everything off the desk in one big yeah. armful, it's a nightmare when you get home. Because you've got to put it all away again, haven't you? Mm. Yeah. yeah. So I, I do use that time as my mm. coming down time yeah. <laughs> off that yeah. high. So. Very much so, Yes. Indeed. So that's about it, isn't it? Now we've we've covered her chanda, yes. and so we're looking forward to our next episode. And what will that be? I'm not telling you. you. No, I'll have to wait and see. <laughs> <laughs> You'll just have to wait and see. But we'll keep these episodes coming thick and fast. And all I can say is, please, please, please keep dipping into our conversation. Indeed. Just before you go, I've got a couple of snippets of interesting information, legend, urban myth for you. Thought you might be interested to hear it. When we're talking about theatre and TV, we've heard people say, before someone goes on to perform, break a leg. Well, what's all that about then? It seems to be the most peculiar thing to say, doesn't it? When someone's just about to go and perform, and it seems a bit unkind, but actually that's not what it's about at all. When you think about the theatre and the curtains that would come across the stage at the end of an act, at the end of a play indeed, the handle that is used to open and close the curtains is called a leg because it's kind of leg shaped, L shaped, and they use it to wind the curtains. And the idea is, you see, that if you should be so very, very, very good that you have curtain call after curtain call after curtain call, the poor little man who's winding those curtains is working so hard, closed, open, closed, open, that he breaks a leg. So that's where that comes from. So many encores that you break the handle, you break a leg. Now the other one that's quite interesting, and I learned this when I trundled off to the Globe Theatre in London for one of these days where you can go and have a look around Shakespeare's theatre. And the Green Room. We've all heard about the Green Room as well. And that's not quite what we expect it to be either. The Green Room, what is that and why is it called that? This is the room that actors and performers will sit in and wait in before it's their turn to go on stage. So it's not the dressing room, it's the kind of in-between space. It's not hospitality, but it's the green room where you wait, 
just before you go on. And the reason why that is called the green room is because in, well, in medieval times and before, when actors were waiting to go on, all they had was a green sward of grass out the back behind the theatre. They didn't have dressing, there was no such thing at all. You were in costume and you were standing around the back of the theatre waiting to go on stage and it was just a patch of grass. And consequently, over the years, that's been the sort of infra dig joke, is that that is the green room. There you go. I love little bits and pieces like that.